there, Tundra Nation, and welcome back to the channel. Now, it's cold outside, and your friend Tyler may have dipped a little too far into the bad decision firewater because we're traveling back to the land of gadgets, good deals, and earthly aromas. So sit back, prepare to inhale the musky smell of freedom, and let's start the show. Before we dive in though, I want to say a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Double Black. Double Black's all-American 416R stainless barrels are threaded half by 28 and are button rifled at a 1 in 10 twist so you can shoot cast, plated, or jacketed ammunition. They're ready to use with no hand fitting required and a thread protector is included. Also sponsoring today's video is Vault Pro, proudly manufacturing the finest American-made safes, vault doors, safe rooms, and storm shelters. When you buy from Vault Pro, your safety and security and privacy is their only priority. Vault Pro has never and will never release your information to another party. Click on the Vault Pro link in the doobly-doo for more information. Parking at the gun show feels like navigating the Fury Road itself. After shelling out $10 to the leather-skinned parking lot attendant screaming cash only, as soon as you roll the window down, the real battle begins. The battle for asphalt, where the spoils are not water or a gallon of gasoline, but a parking space just a few steps from the entrance. Because this is America after all, and if you wanted to walk places, you'd have lived in Europe or San Francisco. A thousand America, I'm sorry. After successfully navigating the parking, you step out onto the hot asphalt. The air, a mixture of anticipation and excitement. As you stride towards the entrance, you pass by a fella who's got a dozen rifles splayed out across his tailgate. You hear as you pass, Hey buddy, you looking for something unique? Congratulations, you've just met Mr. Sketch Parking Lot Guy. Now, Mr. Sketch Parking Lot Guy always seems to have a knack for spotting newcomers and is avoided entirely by the gun show regulars. He's got the sly grin of an off-brand used car salesman and enough chew tucked underneath his lip for an entire baseball team. Buddy, you don't want to go in there and get suckered, he says. And with a swift practice move, he opens a nondescript case to reveal a short-barreled rifle that has less paperwork than the entire kitchen staff of a Waffle House in El Paso. A fact you do point out to him. Well, I thought you were an American, he says while spitting into an Evian water bottle. You wisely decide to keep walking, and a few moments later, your gamble pays off as you notice two fellow sporting Ray-Bans with the Reno May high and tight haircut special from Great Clips speaking into their lapels and suddenly veering away from you. Managing to gain entrance into the gun show, your ears are instantly assaulted by an amplified voice, kind of like mine sometimes. Working from a platform made of discarded pallets and Home Depot AstroTurf, Commando Carl, our resident Marine Sniper Airborne Ranger instructor, is the next character that you're about to stumble on. With half the style and twice the cocaine jitters of Billy Mays, he's hawking his $300 defense and survival classes with the fervor of a tentpole revival preacher. And it's clear that Carl is in fact a man of faith. I mean, he must be because the girdle holding back his massive gut is an engineering miracle. It's hard to listen to his tales of daring when you're wondering if today is the day that girdle finally gives up and meets the Lord. With his earpiece jammed in like he's expecting a call from the president, he talks about his patented three-step method for surviving an apocalypse. Step one is, of course, signing up for his class. Step two involves buying his line of Commando Carl branded MREs. And step three? Well, that's a classified secret unless you're a gold member of his program. Congrats, Carl. You're only one step away from a multi-level marketing scam and only two away from a cult. Hmm. Kind of like BDU. <laughs> Thankful your military grade tinnitus has protected you from most of Carl's spiel, you continue your journey through the gun show wasteland. Suddenly, your eyes are assaulted with the horrific sight of bubbified Millsurp rifles and Mossberg 500s. Congratulations, you're about to meet Jerry Rig Jimmy. Jimmy's booth is a cross between an auto junkyard and a mad scientist meth lab. His wares? 
a motley collection of rifles and shotguns, all victim of what appears to be a Frankenstein-esque style of surgery involving a Dremel, a bandsaw, and possibly jars of JB Weld and moonshine, sometimes mixed together. Carl Gustav Mauser is tapped and sporterized with 3x9 Chinesium optics on him. Oh my god, Swiss K31s with polymer stocks as flexible as your wife's yoga instructor Darren. And then there's old Jimmy there proudly declaring these are the best deals in the show. His rifles are held together with duct tape, red Loctite, and the sheer power of positive thinking. Now you're no snitch, but you are thinking about calling Interpol and the Hag for the crimes against humanity you're seeing in this booth. Another crime you can witness is my poor gameplay. Come check me out seven days a week over on Twitch at Tundra Gaming Live or right here on YouTube because we can multi-stream now. Thanks, tech overlords. Also, come on, it's not that bad, is it? Come on. Trying to control your rage and not go full of Morton Joe, you back away from Jimmy's booth only to knock into a metal box that makes a strange hollow wump wump noise. Turning around, you're greeted by Vince the Vault Guy and dozens of security containers that he has for sale. Vince launches into his sales pitch armed with teeth whiter than Joe Biden's and a collection of buzzwords that would make a Silicon Valley CEO blush. He promises his residential containers are in penetrable vault-like forces, and Vince swears that these babies can survive a nuclear blast. Today, he can offer you a good deal as well because of direct from factory pricing. But looking at the label, it says made in Indiana. Suspiciously though, the last two letters in Indiana appear to be written in Sharpie. Opening one of these vaults, you can tell the metal is only slightly thicker than a condom wrapper and offers the same level of protection as the rhythm method. The locks touted as state-of-the-art look suspiciously like they could be picked by a moderately skilled raccoon in under a minute or the governor of California in five. Just when you thought the gun show was going to be all about guns, you are blinded by what feels like a thousand small suns as light reflects off a bright table of jewelry up ahead of you. As your eyes adjust, you nearly stumble over a small table draped in velvet. Behind the table stands faux gold Fred and his neon Hawaiian shirt and gold chains. Well, they're giving off a vibe that's part Miami Vice, part yard sale, and part to catch a predator. Freddy spots you and moves in for the kill just like he's in a dream on Elm Street. Ha <laughs> ha, I see you've got an eye for quality, growls Freddy in a voice that reminds you of every bad guy from every 80s action flick you've ever watched. He begins picking up a pair of earrings shaped like a revolver and AK-47s. You can't help but notice though the speck of blood on one and it gives you the impression they were unwillingly reposed from their previous owner. 24 karat gold, he assures you, and as you take the proffered jewelry, your hand instantly turns green and begins to burn. Seeing your reaction, Freddy's charm fades faster than his gold jewelry in a swimming pool, and he starts ranting about how you clearly don't appreciate his fine jewelry or the women in your life. If you truly loved any of your wives or mistresses, he argues, you wouldn't think twice about paying twice as much for these beauties. That's rad. With the burning sensation fading and the green stain finally coming off, you find yourself deeper in the labyrinth of the gun show. Like a casino, you can't see an exit or a clock anywhere, and somehow you become penned into a U-shape of tables with a hodgepodge of items, all claiming to be authentic or authentic replicas. Get ready to meet our buddy, Counterfeit Clyde. Now here's Clyde with his grizzled beard and his faded confederate cap, and he's spinning a tail as tall as the Appalachian Mountains, showing off his genuine confederate currency that he's selling for the very reasonable price of twice the face value. You politely explain to Clyde that you don't collect monies from countries that just don't exist, have never been to the moon, or have never fielded at least 10 aircraft carriers. I mean, a man's gotta have standards, am I right? Trying to find your way back to the gun section, you see green canvas and red crosses. This must be the way. But first, you've got to make it past Dr. Maybe. Dressed in a lab coat that's seen more stains than a suspiciously recognizable black leather couch, a stethoscope around his neck, and a name tag that reads Dr. Maybe, he is a character straight out of a low-budget urinary health supplement commercial. 
He attempts to add credibility by showing off his frame degrees from Hardvard Medical School and Yall University. His table is lined with no less than 15 microscopes, all bought from a local surplus sale from the high school. These microscopes allow you to watch his cures working for yourself. His booth brims with an odd assortment of medical supplies. Yeah, they can kind of be called that. I mean, there are bandages that look suspiciously repackaged, antiseptics that smell more like cheap vodka, and a variety of miracle cures promising everything from hair growth to increasing your caliber size, if you know what I mean. Go on. Dr. Maybe then asks if you'd like to be a part of an experiment he's conducting. You quickly walk away and instantly bump into two men with hunting rifles slung over their shoulders. The first one speaks, I'm Dan, and this is my cousin Dan. Now the Dans are an inseparable duo at every gun show, peddling their whales with a side of nostalgia. Their merchandise? A couple of 30-06 hunting rifles that were made when John F. Kennedy was still president. The rifles, much like the Dans themselves, have seen better days. But even more mind-blowing is the price that they're asking. Now, when you question them about their exorbitant prices, they launch into a lengthy diatribe about the good old days and how they don't make them like they used to. I mean, according to the Dans, the rust isn't even a sign of neglect, but a badge of honor that adds character. They spin yarns about the soul of their rifles. I mean, each scratch and dent is a testament to their storied past. You move on explaining that if you wanted something with a soul, you'd go out and get a Ouija board and talk to Don Cornelius. Like many adventures in the wasteland, you didn't find what you wanted, but you were certainly entertained. As you head back to your vehicle, once again ready to fight your way through the fiery road of the exit lane, you can't help but notice Mr. Sketch hanging out with the local police department munching on some donuts. Hmm. Looks like the Alphabet Boys came up empty here, and the only winner was the lady selling those $6 donuts. Subscribe!